In this video, we describe the boil temperature. Okay, in a prior video, we have seen how real gases deviate from ideality and how we can come up with a Burial equation of state that in principle is able to capture those deviations from ideality. Okay, this is how these Burial equations of state look like for uh, real gases. Uh, where here we have the version expanded on pressure, and here's the version expanded on uh, inverse of molar volume. Uh, those uh, B primes, B, C prime, C, D prime, C, those are the coefficients of uh, the virial expansion or the virial coefficients, and they are not the same, uh, but they are related to each other. Now, what we do in this video is we learn the meaning, uh, or we begin to uh, think about whether those virial coefficients have a physical meaning that can help us understand uh, real gases a little bit better. Okay, uh, to do that, we're going to go again to this uh, compression factor versus pressure or inverse molar volume diagram and recall uh, uh, how this behavior that we see right here is connected to the interactions of a gas. Okay, so again, our, our baseline is always going to be the ideal case where the compression factor should be one regardless of the pressure. Okay, but under some circumstances, uh, uh, for example, this could be a gas at relatively low temperatures, we actually see that this compression factor initially uh, is uh, below 1, and then eventually turns over and becomes larger than, than 1, which will be the ideal case. Uh, this will be the graph uh, of the same gas, but at a higher temperature, and we, there we see that the compression factor is always larger than 1, regardless of the pressure. Okay, so uh, remember that uh, whether you're below one or above one has to do with the dominant interactions uh, in between the particles of that gas, right? So values that are below one uh, means that attractions between the gas particles are dominant. And values uh, of the compression factor above one means that repulsions are dominant. Right, an easy way to uh, remember this is to recognize that here uh, the compression factor uh, is lower than one. That means that the gas is easier to compress than if there is no interactions. Right, so the gas is easier to compress if attractions are pulling the molecules together. Here we have a, a z value larger than one, and that means that the, hard, the, the gas is harder to compress than if there were no interactions at all. And that can happen if the gas particles are repelling each other. Okay, so that's that's kind of the idea. So the question is whether we can kind of connect this uh, concept of attractions, repulsions, or interactions in general between gas particles and these coefficients of the virial expansion. Okay, so uh, to do that, uh, what we can actually can observe is that uh, notice that the limiting uh, a value at pressure is equal to zero of these two compression factor behaviors as a function of pressure, uh, you know, the limiting value is the same as one. At low pressures, regardless of the temperature, you always recover the ideal, uh, the ideal case. But at higher pressures, notice that the approach towards that ideal uh, uh, limit is actually different, right? Notice that this uh, curve approach that one from below and that curve approach that uh, limiting ideal case from above. Okay, and, and if you think about it, uh, the first derivative is different in these two approaches, right? Here you will have that that first derivative is negative, that slope is negative, and here that first derivative is positive. Okay, so what we're going to do is take first derivatives of these expressions as a function of the variable that breaks down the model and see if we can uh, uh, see where, that, uh, where those signs would lead us in terms of reconciling uh, the values of those uh, constants with uh, the dominant interactions in the gas. Okay, what we're actually going to do is only for uh, the virial ex uh, equation of state expanded in terms of pressure. Okay, so our goal then uh, is to actually re recover our value for the compression factor expanded in terms of pressure, which has this simple polynomial shape and so forth. Uh, so I'm not going to write the third, third order terms, but here you can. This can be as as large an expression as, as uh, large an expansion as you would like. The goal here, though, is to examine the first derivative because we know that there is a difference uh, uh, 
qualitative difference between uh, that behavior and this behavior. And that seems to do with uh, why interactions are dominant. Okay, so when we do that, uh, so let's take first derivative of that expression. So this is simply going to be v prime plus 2c prime p. If you had here your other term, that will be, I'm not going to write it, but, but you can see that this expression continues. Okay, and now what we can actually do is recognize that the point of interest is this one, right? Uh, and that is a limit uh, of low pressures. So now what we actually do is evaluate this at the limit where the pressure goes to zero. And notice that uh, if the pressure goes to zero, then this term will be zero. And the only thing that you actually have left over is that B prime constant. Okay, so notice that uh, we're already learning about these virial coefficients uh, from this simple scheme, right? Notice that uh, in this particular case where attractions are dominant uh, early on in this curve, right? Uh, that would mean that this B prime uh, uh, constant would be negative. Okay, so the idea here is that when the B prime constant is negative, then what we understand is that attractions dominate. The interactions between the gas particles dominate. All right, and the other curve where you actually have that repulsions are, are always the, uh, uh, you know uh, way in the day. What actually that means is that well, this uh, B prime. Uh, is larger than zero, and if that's the case, then repulsions win the day. Okay. All right. So uh, now we introduce the concept uh, of the boil temperature. Really, the only difference between these two curves is that they are taken at different temperatures. You have lower temperatures, you have that curve. Higher temperatures, you tend to have that curve. Right. So how is the temperature really uh, related to what forces are are uh, dominant? Okay, so, so this is uh, easy to understand if you appeal to the concept of thermal motion. Okay, when you think about a gas, uh, that gas is moving according to a temperature. That's what we call thermal motion. Now, if the temperature is quite low, your energy, your thermal energy to move uh, will also be low. And the idea here is that if you come close to a, a neighboring gas particle, right, if you're moving slowly, then you're going to be more likely to be attracted uh, uh, to that nearby particle, right? You're going to spend enough time in the vicinity of that the attraction of the neighboring to actually feel that attraction. However, if you elevate the temperature a lot, then what's going to happen is that you're going to be moving very, very quickly. And what that means is that you're actually going to be flying through the attractive well of that potential, and you're actually going to be colliding very forcefully with your neighbors as you go by. That means that you tend to experience repulsions much more readily than attractions because you just don't spend enough time for you to be able to uh, feel that attractive force. Instead, you just are, are colliding, jamming uh, those particles with each other, and, and that's, that's, you're, you're experiencing the repulsive part of the potential, uh, again, more readily. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of why temperature uh, has an influence on whether the repulsions or the attractions are dominant. Okay, so the boil temperature would be uh, the following. Notice that if V prime uh, is negative, then attractions are dominant, you will have this behavior. And then if V prime is positive, then repulsions are dominant, you will have that behavior. But there should be a point, which is exactly in the middle of this, when V prime is equal to zero, right? So, so that is actually what happens at the boil temperature, right? There's going to be a uh, temperature at which kind of the attractions or the effect of attractions and repulsions is the same and those uh, forces cancel each other out. Okay, so that we'll, we'll call the boil temperature at that temperature. And then temperature. Right, so what will happen is that uh, the first derivative of the compression factor versus the pressure would be zero. Okay, so what that means is that you will have a graph that looks like this, right? So the approach of this uh, compression factor versus pressure or inverse molar volume uh, will be zero, so something like this. But of course, eventually that will turn over and repulsions will kind of win the day. Okay, but that's what happens at the boil temperature. Here is T equal to T boil, and there will be a temperature that is less than T boil. 
and this temperature would be a temperature that is higher than the boil temperature. Okay, so these are three limiting cases for uh, graphs of compression factor versus pressure or inverse molar volume and how those depend on the temperature. Okay, so let me summarize this video then. Uh, what we've done is we have uh, uh, tried to provide an initial understanding of how uh, some of these variable coefficients are related to the interactions that take place uh, between particles in a gas. We've seen that if this uh, B' prime factor, this variable co uh, coefficient, uh, is positive, then we have the repulsions are uh, dominating at that particular temperature. If it's negative, then attractions dominate at that particular temperature, and then um, if it's zero, we reach a limit that is called the boil temperature, and that is kind of the, uh, at the midpoint or the magic balance between attractions and repulsions, and at that particular case, you resemble ideality uh, uh, over a longer range of pressures than either at lower temperatures or at higher temperatures.